Thousands of Canadians may be living with a cancer risk and not know it. You may have heard about the health threat from radon. It's a radioactive gas linked to lung cancer. Health Canada says no part of this country is radon free, but CBC News has obtained never before released data from the agency that suggests thousands of Canadian homes have in fact unsafe radon levels. Health Canada tested in 14,000 homes right across the country. That data shows more than one in 10 homes had radon levels that reach or exceed Canadian health guidelines. Under even stricter World Health Organization guidelines, the number jumps to nearly one in three. Radon seeps into the basement of a home through cracks in the foundation, pipes and windows. You can't see, taste or smell it. The radioactive gas is emitted naturally from the soil, from decaying uranium. Long-term exposure is linked to lung cancer. 3,000 lung cancer deaths in this country every year. Radon is found in higher concentrations of some parts of Canada, but radon levels can vary from house to house within the same neighborhood. Health Canada recommends everyone get their home tested. And that's the recommendation of my guest as well. We think after I've just told you about what we found in those Health Canada documents we have uh, unearthed for the first time, you likely will have a lot of questions about radon in your own home and your own safety. So Bob Bob Wood in with, with me this morning. He is the president of the Canadian Association of Radon Scientists and Technologists. He also runs a company that detects and mitigates radon in homes. And we'll talk about that in a second. But Bob, thanks for being here. Because we're getting tons of questions for you from our viewers. Thank you so much for having me. Wonderful to have you here. Last hour we took a look at radon itself, what it is, where it comes from, the fact that, that it is in home after home, no area immune from this across, to the, uh, across the country. And we left off with the testing because there is a kit available in hardware stores in stores you have with you again just show it to people again well, so they would the, know the, uh, the home the, kit I guess we can call it these may be um, available from a, um, a an internet source okay. um, so somebody that is doing professional testing but may may do mail out kits um, from for homeowners Online. there is also There's, you can buy them in the stores you can as buy well, them in some you? of the big box stores um, are, are um, having them in stock um, we started with a lot more of them doing it. Um, sometimes they can be hanging around the big box stores for quite a while. They might be a little dusty. Um, oh, really? Is, is that we haven't had the penetration into the market of people buying into this. And, and I quite frankly don't understand it because this is a preventable cancer. Um, is, is that in, and simply test your home, fix it if it's high. Okay. Clarify for a couple of our viewers who, who have written it. So that home kit, it's available in stores, as you said. Yep. You might have to dust it off. How much would it cost in a, Typically, in a store? Typically, they're around $50. $50. Bucks. And then how much? How often should you test at home yourself? Um, is, is that we want homeowners to test and then retest every two years. Okay. Um, that's the new guidance that's going to be coming down from Health Canada in the process. Right now, it's test um, your home and then test um, again if you do major renovations to your home. All right. So you showed us that this kit would work the same way. You hang it and then it measures the radon or if you there can is even any. place it out on a place table. Place it out. Then you mail it in. Mail it in. And you'll find out what the levels are. Alan wrote in to ask how long you have to need to test it. How long do you need to run that test? How long do you need to hang it? What Health Canada recommends is that we do a three month test in the winter months. Um, in the winter months, in the winter why months? in the winter? Um, because quite simply, we close our houses up in the winter. Um, we don't open a lot of windows, um, and that's going to result in the, the radon levels being more elevated in the winter. There's no point in testing a house if you've got the windows wide open, um, because we're going to have a lot of outside air okay. in. And do you test in the basement? We've, we've been learning that that's where the, the levels will be highest. Uh, well, it's in most homes, yes. Um, Levels are highest in the basement simply because that's where the radon source is. So as it comes up through the, the floor, um, it will start to dissipate. And houses breathe. Most people don't realize how much houses breathe. But as we start to get up onto the first floor and the second floor, um, there's some washing out from that housing, the house breathing, and so the levels will be reduced. Okay. The only reason why we test in a basement is if you use the basement. If you never go down there, what we want you to do is test where you live where because you that's the exposure. But it's interesting, Alan's email to us mentions that on those hot summer nights, his family likes to sleep in the cool basement. So you might want to be aware yeah, of that if, as if well. If you're down there, that's where you test. Okay. So 
three months, mail it in, find out if the levels are of concern, and we're going to get to what to do yep. if they are in a second. But you can go farther than the do-it-yourself kit. You can bring in a company like yours. Yep. Now, what will be the advantage of that? Well, simply is, is that we're going to make sure that we get the placement right. We're going to know what we're looking for. Um, and if you have to move forward into a mitigation, you have a professional that you already know and trust and have met, and they can give you really good, solid advice about who to go to within your area. All right. Um, so this is, would be a kit that you would carry with you. This, this is like a, that? a kit that we use for a real estate transaction. Yeah. Oh, for real estate is, transaction. Is this that, um, under the rules on, uh, that we operate under, there's, there's Canadian rules, and before we had Canadian rules, we went to the U.S. rules. In the U.S., they suggest do a 48-hour test, and that's their almost their gold standard. And so. Test, test kits like this were developed that can do a, an electronic monitor test. Is that what's in that box? That, that's what's in that box. Okay. This is a radon detector. Okay. Um, and so we would go into a home and place this in for 48 hours, and we actually get some really good data out of the electronic ones where we can see what's going on hour by hour within the, within the test. We can make sure if it's a real estate test, the owner, the, the potential owner, isn't in the home. So we can see if the if a window's been opened because we'll we'll see changes in the temperature, um, and the barometric pressure. All of that stuff gets recorded in here. So it's is it a mandatory part of a real estate transaction? No, and it's not. It's, it's not. Um, Should it be? In my opinion, yes. Hmm. Um, is is that it would be simply makes sense, but the real estate market as it is now um, is driven provincially and. It's, it will come, in my opinion, that it will become mandatory, but it's, it's just going to take some time um, and the right person to get involved and say, this is silly, we should have this as a mandatory test. As you say, a preventable cancer here. Yeah. We're dealing with some 3,000 cases a year. Hold the next thought, whatever you had next, Bob, <laughs> because we're going to bring you back in next hour for more questions. We'll pick up on the real estate component of this and again a little bit more detail on the diagnostics. Bob Wood staying with me. If you have questions about radon and your home, what to do about it and then again if you do have elevated levels we'll move to that next hour about how to make sure you can solve the problem in your home. Email your questions to your news at cbc.ca or you can tweet them to us at hashtag CBCNN.